Did you know that voice assistants like Siri and Alexa can make you rude and sexist? Stick around and I'll tell you all about it. Hey Siri, why are my kids screaming at you? This is the University of the Netherlands. I have a friend who lives in the United States and a few years ago I was visiting her. She complained that her little son of three years old was being rude to other children while playing in a sandbox. He was yelling at the other kids, barking orders. It was terrible. My friend had no idea where this behavior came from. She definitely did not teach him to speak like this. Later in the day, we were having dinner at their home. And while we were eating, I observed how the husband of my friend commanded Alexa. Now, for those of you who don't know, Alexa is a voice assistant from Amazon. It's a smart speaker. For example, you can ask Alexa to play a certain song or order a pizza or dim the lights for you. So the husband of my friend was doing just that. He was trying to tell Alexa to turn the lights. But the voice assistant did not understand. The husband became more and more agitated because the assistant failed and started yelling at the device, Alexa, you're stupid. And I noticed the kid also said, Alexa, stupid. The kid mirrored the behavior of his parents. To demonstrate a little bit better how kids interact with a voice assistant, I'd like to show you a short clip. Play Faddle Monkeys. No, play Faddle Monkeys. Do Faddle Monkeys. Faddle Monkeys. Let's tell you. Tell you. Hmm. I'm not sure what you meant by that question. Lexa, where are you? Miss me. No, ma'am. Lexa, play happy and you know it. Playing happy from Despicable Me 2. Alexa, play happy and you know it. If you're happy and you know it, by the Kaboomers. So this is kind of cute and funny, but also a bit disturbing, right? As an ethicist, I focus on the way technology helps to shape our values, what is important and meaningful to us. In this lecture, I will talk about how voice assistants like Alexa and Google Home are changing the way we speak, interact and live. I will show how this technology is not neutral. While it answers any questions we might have and helps us in daily tasks, it in parallel enables root communication, promotes gender stereotypes, and brings along privacy issues. But while there are some downsides, I will also talk about how voice assistants can help us be better versions of ourselves. First, let's focus on what we're dealing with. How many home speakers are there? For instance, in the US and Germany, one in four households is using a voice assistant in the shape of smart speaker like Alexa or Google Home. Globally, some estimate that more than 2.6 billion smart speakers will be in use already in 2021. Also, a lot of you might use voice assistant on your phone like Siri and Google Assistant to set an alarm or a timer. Even though they differ from smart speakers by shape, the voice interaction technology in your phones remains the same. And people seem really eager to use this technology. But why are voice assistants becoming so popular? Well, for us humans, interacting with technologies by speaking feels very natural, more natural than, for instance, typing or swiping. Besides, we can speak much faster than we can type. But as you saw in the video with the little girl, voice assistants still make a lot of mistakes and don't often understand the user the first time. In fact, instead of understanding, I suggest that processing is a better word because voice assistants don't understand what you're saying in the same way that people understand each other. Rather, they identify what we say as a series of patterns and commands. The clearer and shorter they are, the better voice assistants are able to react. The users quickly notice this and learn to adjust their speech such that voice assistants can process it. Hence, our language becomes very functional and top-down. We use commands and short sentences as simple as possible. Because we like voice as a means of communication, we're very forgiving towards voice assistants. 
And instead of adapting the technology to the way we speak, we're adjusting ourselves to the currently limited technological capabilities. Let's focus on a few other points. One interesting fact about voice assistants is that a lot of them use female voices, and this is an intentional choice. User studies support the fact that people react better to female voices. They view them as more trustworthy, more comfortable, and more helpful to talk to. Female voices make them feel like no one is commanding them. Manufacturers of the speakers use this feature to sell their products and to motivate users to interact with their devices longer. It is important to know that Alexa is owned by Amazon, Google Home by Google, and Cortana on your personal computers by Microsoft. While the use of female voices in digital assistants has commercial value, it also has some concerns. Already in 1997, a US study showed that using female voices in computer programs really promotes gender stereotypes. For instance, when a computer assistant employs a female voice, the users start associating any female voices with being an assistant. A 2019 UNESCO report confirmed this finding by explicitly exploring the case of smart speakers. According to the report, voice assistants promote an image of a woman who is docile, always available, and never says no. Let's dive a little bit deeper to see how voice assistants promote such stereotypes. One way is to see how voice assistants react to what we say to them. Because they are essentially robots that cannot get irritated, people try to test their limits. Very often, people use sexual insults to provoke the smart speakers. Here, you see how different voice assistants react to that. When a user addresses the voice assistant with, you're a slut, Siri almost flirts in response by saying, I'd blush if I could. While Alexa says, well, thanks for the feedback. Cortana almost always falls back on porn search. And Google Home frequently responds with, my apologies, I don't understand. It is interesting to ask yourself how these patterns of interaction rewire the way we think about women. The UNESCO report already highlighted some concerns about this. By making it a design feature that voice assistants cannot contradict the user, cannot refuse their request, and are available 24-7, smart speakers bring back the stereotypes that we as a society tried to tackle a long time ago, that women are always by your side to do your bidding, cannot refuse requests, or speak for themselves. Let's move on to another problem with voice assistants, privacy. The more you talk to the speaker, the more it knows about your interests and preferences. 2019 was the year when it became clear that all of the big companies like Microsoft, Google, and Amazon have staff members across the globe who listen to the conversations the users have with the smart speakers. So real people are listening in. And while they do it to improve the quality of speech recognition software, this was not stipulated in the terms and conditions of the speakers. Many users were shocked because they were led to believe that no one was listening to them, that their conversations were private. This violated the trust of people. And the privacy concern remains among the top reasons why people don't want to buy one. What complicates the matters further is that voice assistants often turn on when not asked. They mishear the wake word, such as, hey, Google, and nonetheless, they start recording what's currently being said in the room. Now, when you hear about these downsides, it may feel like there are only two options possible. Option number one, accepting these privacy breaches, gender stereotypes, and the fact that your kids and you may act rude and still use the voice assistant. Or option number two, save yourself from all that and don't use the device at all. And I find such dilemmas quite irritating because it shouldn't be an either or choice. A third option is possible. Now that we know that these voice assistants are not neutral tools, we can use this knowledge to change how we design and use these technologies. And the good news is, this is already happening. Let's come back to privacy. Designers in Project Alias created a kind of muffin top that mitigates the privacy concerns with the smart speakers. It functions as a kind of mediator between you and your smart speaker. It allows the users to change the wake word into anything they like, 
And unless this new wake word is used, the muffin top feeds white noise to the smart speaker all the time. So when you are not using the voice assistant, it cannot record anything by accident. You feel safer and more in control. I think it's a great example of smart design that incorporates how technologies change our values. Once we identify technological impact, we can also work with it by both maintaining our privacy and still being able to use the device. But what about promoting gender stereotypes? Thankfully, independent researchers got interested in that problem as well, coming up with an elegant solution. To mitigate gender stereotypes, a group of Danish researchers developed Q, a genderless voice assistant. Hi, I'm Q, the world's first genderless voice assistant. Think of me like Siri or Alexa, but neither male nor female. I'm created for a future where we are no longer defined by gender but rather how we define ourselves. My voice was recorded by people who neither identify as male nor female, and then altered to sound gender neutral, putting my voice between 145 and 175 hertz, a range defined by audio researchers. This is a great example of a voice that doesn't have to be male or female. I don't know about you, but sometimes I hear more of a female voice and sometimes more of a male voice, but it all blends together in the end. So this problem can be solved as well. But we equally need to change what the speakers are saying, not just the voice itself. It would be great if the voice assistants could engage in a meaningful interaction, and sometimes it would mean not acting so docile and speaking back. A good example here is Zara the Supergirl, an empathetic chatbot developed by a Chinese scholar, Pascal Fung. If you abuse the chatbot verbally or say something disturbing, it will definitely intervene and let you know. Even though the speech recognition technology is not yet perfect, Zara the Supergirl indicates a good way forward by constructing conversations where not only the users but also the voice assistants can speak back and react more naturally to what is being said. Even though all of these initiatives are private, the manufacturers of the smart speakers try to respond to the negative attention by redesigning their voice assistants. Let's go back to how children interact with the smart speakers. The fact that kids between the ages of three to four became one of the most active user group of voice assistants was an unintended consequence for the manufacturers. But if you think about it, it really doesn't come as a big surprise. Three to four is the age when children start asking questions. A great advantage of voice assistants is that they're endlessly patient. They don't get irritated, don't get tired, or yell at children when they ask the same question 100 times over again. Children are simply fascinated to use them. But as I mentioned earlier, one side effect may be that your kids start speaking in a rude way or mishearing your child a voice assistant will redirect them to a porn website, which happens quite often. Another interesting fact. Smart speakers make it exceptionally easy to buy things online and to order additional services. All you need to do is just say, OK, when being asked by the speaker. As a result, kids are able to order all kinds of stuff online just by saying, OK, like this little girl who ordered a dollhouse and cookies. That's why in 2018, Amazon launched the kids edition of its popular smart speaker. It will not direct your child to a porn website and will only respond to your request if you say please or thank you. Additionally, parents can set a password for buying things. As I showed you, once we acknowledge that technologies are not neutral, but actively mediate our perceptions and actions, we can find productive ways to work with these impacts and still enjoy the benefits of voice assistance. After all, they can be a great way for people to live their life with less typing or swiping. For me personally as well, I use the integrated voice assistant in my phone for texting, for listening to the news, and setting a timer. Such uses may be trivial, but for some, they ensure an inclusion in the digital world that otherwise remains closed up for them. Besides being popular with the differently abled people and those not being able to read or write, Elderly people are also among frequent users of voice assistants. Elderly people often face loneliness. Many of them like having someone to talk to 24 seven, even when they're quite aware that they're talking to a robot. In fact, they prefer talking to a robot precisely because it's not human 
it cannot feel their vulnerabilities and simply provides a friendly chat. People with visual impairments also find voice assistance really helpful. And they can also help children and adults on the autism spectrum to practice the back and forth conversation skills. Our question at the beginning of this talk was, hey Siri, why are my kids screaming at you? As I showed you, voice assistants mediate how we think of language, how we talk, and which values we find important. They can make us rude, promote gender stereotypes, listen to us when we don't want them to, and they make it really easy to order stuff online. Despite all this, I'm not against their use. It would be great if the manufacturers of voice assistants could do a better job at anticipating such technological impacts and updating their devices faster. Meanwhile, however, we as users are not just the passive recipients of whatever voice assistants bring along. Once we acknowledge that they're not neutral digital butlers, but also change the way we think about the world and actually act on it, we can incorporate this into our daily use. The bottom line is that by exploring how your smart speakers affect your life can empower you to be more critical and informed about its use. You may want to use it in a different way, or you may choose not to use it anymore. Thank you for listening. Okay, Google, play the end tune. Thank you.